Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our service to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the unveiling of Dalbiti War Memorial. Now, it is also the 100th anniversary of the formation of the Royal British Legion Scotland. But our main focus today is on our War Memorial. And as you can see, we're going to do a symbolic unveiling very soon, performed by our two special guests today, Jennifer Stewart and Nancy Alexander, who are the granddaughters of Mr. Duncan Alexander, who unveiled this memorial 100 years ago today. So if I can ask Jennifer and Nancy, if they make their way up to do a bit of unveiling, they're going to pause just for a few seconds if any of you want to take their picture before they actually unveil it. Okay, Jennifer and Nancy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to introduce you to our new Lord Lieutenant of the Surety, uh, the Lord Sinclair. Uh, he has newly just been appointed in July of this year in the position, but he's not new to the job because he has been a Deputy Lieutenant since 2016. So we wish him well in his new role and thank you very much for coming today. If you did, to stand up and everybody can see who he is. Thank you very much. Now, before I introduce our other guests, I want to take this opportunity to tell you about what the Dalbiti branch of the British Legion is going to do to our War Memorial. First of all, as I'm sure all of you have noticed, uh, the memorial has been cleaned all re-lettered and I think it looks the best it's looked for many a year. We're also going to be erecting a flagpole just at the rear end of the memorial with a couple of planters at his base. We're going to be installing some spotlights inside the memorial or inside the fence of the memorial and we're also going to be repointing the path up to and round the memorial as if we're necessary. Now, as I'm sure you can understand, all of this takes some considerable amount of money. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the following groups who have been very supportive of us. First of all, Dalbiti Rotary Club, who give a very generous donation. The Ruth and Bert Dunn Trust, who gave an equally generous donation. We'd also like to thank Dumfries and Galloway Council, Dalbiti Community Council, Dalbiti Pre-Loved Awards, and Dalbiti Branch of the British Legion, which I will just mention that we got a generous donation from uh, the funeral of a DD veteran who was a member of Dalbiti, uh, a Mr. Ian Gregg. In fact, Ian was one of the gentlemen who unveiled these benches, the, 90, the First World War and the Second World War benches. Unfortunately, he passed away earlier this year, but he was a key, very keen member of our branch. So I thank all of those groups for their support. 
Uh, this opportunity, I also want to thank, I don't know if she's here today or not, but the person who looks after the flower beds. Like the memorial, I think they are in a first class condition and once again the best they've been for many years. And that is Margaret Cop. So we thank Margaret for all her hard work. Now we'd like to introduce our first guest. Now he's travelled down from Edinburgh to be with us today and I'm going to let him explain to you his connection to Dalbiti and this memorial. Would you please welcome Mr Desmond Maxwell. To start, I would like to thank Jim Dingwall for his warm words and for inviting my sister Mary and myself to this event. I'm under no illusions as to why he did so and why he asked me to say a few words to you today. It is simply for the continuity, which is to say that I am a great grandson of William Jardine Harris Maxwell of Munchies, who gave the address at the original unveiling of this Delbiti Wall Memorial exactly 100 years ago today, that is on the 4th September 1921. I can think of three reasons why my great-grandfather was asked to speak on that occasion. Firstly, the Copelands of Colliston and the Maxwells of Munches were the two of the local families who actively encouraged the development of Dolbiti from a small settlement in the 1780s to a fair-sized borough a century later. And this rapid growth, as you well know, was of course fueled by the local granite industry, which was at its height and was shipping out Dolbiti granite for the construction of the Mersey docks, the Thames embankment, the Ediston lighthouse, and even, I was told as a child, for the pavements of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Perhaps that's a bit of a stretch, actually. Anyway. I'd now like to introduce you to a gentleman if ever any of these are needing information on war memorials, this is your man. He's going to give us a wee brief information on Dolbiti War Memorial. Would you please welcome Mr. Paul Goodwin. Even before the Great War had drawn to a close, communities across Scotland began to discuss how best to commemorate their dead. With few exceptions, the dead lay in foreign fields, either in cemeteries or lost in the mud of the battlefields. Everyone needed a local place to remember their loved ones. Local war memorial committees were set up to decide what form their memorial should take, and the designs chosen were many and varied. The committees had to find a suitable site, sometimes with heated local debate, agree a design, raise funds by public subscription, and decide whose names should be included or excluded. Much of their reasoning for their decisions is lost to time. There were no government instructions on how to proceed or funds to carry out the work and so this memorial is the result of decisions made by local people and it was paid for by local people. It may come as a surprise that it took three years from the armistice and over two years from the peace treaty for memorials to be completed with the majority in Scotland being unveiled in 1921. Some memorials record the end date as 1918, which was the date of the armistice, whereas others record 1919, the date of the peace treaty. On Sunday the 4th of September 1921, this memorial was unveiled by a local blinded war hero, named as Mr William Alexander of the Royal Scots Fusiliers in the newspaper report of the unveiling but referred to elsewhere as William Duncan Alexander or Old Duncan. 
The address was given by Mr W. H. Maxwell of Munches, two of whose sons are listed on the memorial. The design was adopted on the advice of Mr W. S. George, RSA, and Mr A. E. Hornell, artists from Kirkubri. The memorial is an adaptation of a traditional Mercat cross in Dalbiti granite and surmounted by a Galloway lion. The parade was headed by the Airborough Pipe Band and there were three platoons of old comrades with many local dignitaries and representatives of local organisations. It is estimated that the crowd was over 2,000. We we'll pass it over to our British Legion Area Secretary and the Free and Galloway Councillor, Mr Archie Driver. Um, Lord Lieutenant, Honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jim and your branch, thank you very much for inviting me along today to say a few words on behalf of Royal British Legion Scotland. Um, as Paul has already said, in, in this 100th year there's going to be a lot of war memorials who were, which were unveiled in, in this particular year and there's going to be you know, a lot of communities getting together and, and hopefully remembering those that fell in, in, in the two wars and, and the conflict since. Uh, RBLS, is, as Jim said, is 100 year old this year along with our sister uh, charity Poppy Scotland and we'll see you know, some of the wreaths being laid from some of those veterans who have made those wreaths up in Earl Hague House up in, up in Edinburgh. Uh, I, I'm in charge of or administrate to 34 branches in Glasgow, Ayrshire, Dumfries and Galloway and I have to say Dalbeaty branch is one of the best. I don't have any problems at all with Dalbeaty branch and I'm really pleased about that because Jim and, and Robert and, and the team here certainly look after their branch very very well. It's also important to be here as the Armed Forces Champion for Dumfries and Galloway Council. Um, understanding that as, as a, an act of remembrance and a commemoration of these war memorials that we still, as Paul said at the end, remember them. Um, they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. It's a, a poignant saying of Binion's lines and it's, it's remembered right across the world. Uh, and, and thankfully today and other days this year that will be said time and time again. I think in remembrance this year in November we are at long last going to ha ha be able to do some form of parades outside in, in the good weather. But up till then and after then these commemorative events are going to show that the communities around Dumfries and Galloway and those other areas that I represent are, are, are always looking to improve the lives of those ex-service men and women who have gave so much for our country today and we live in the relative peace and, and the harmony uh, other, other than places like Afghanistan and things like that where you see a horrible thing happening across there. So on behalf of Royal British Legion, uh, President Sir Alistair Irwin, the Chief Executive Claire um, Armstrong and our area Chairman Mick Connor, can I thank Dalbeaty Branch for allowing me to come along today, say a few words and thank you for turning up and showing your support for the families that gave so much for this dedication. Thank you. Now ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to our Minister for today, who's going to say a few words on remembrance. Would you please welcome the Reverend Fiona Wilson. It's an honour to be able to be here and to commemorate this special occasion. The War Memorial means so much to so many. It's somewhere that people can go and quietly reflect on those that they have lost. We have our own war memorial here and it stands proud in the middle of our park. Many people come on odd days. Some families come to research. We should be proud of the fact that our war memorial is here and that it stands for so much and reminds us of so much. Heavenly Father, today is about remembrance. 
we remember all those who have fallen. We didn't come back from the two wor world wars, but we also remember those who have fallen since. We think of a world where we would rather have peace. Your kingdom is one of justice and peace. And we pray, Lord, for peace around the world, especially at this moment with the situation in Afghanistan. Lord, we give thanks for all those who gave their time, who gave their talents and their money, who came to see to the war memorial and to brighten it up to rededicate it, recommemorate it. And as we do, Lord, in the moments following, we will have a remembrance, an act of remembrance, and help us in the silence to remember those family, friends, and all those that we've known who have gone before us. Heavenly Father, we give thanks and we ask your blessing upon this war memorial and upon these people here today. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today.